Yum, yum! Hello, Pedro here. This is a quick rundown on Vector Display, a tiny digital asset that I created to be able to visualize arrays of vectors since the current visualizers don't uh, don't allow that. I've made a feature request, but meanwhile decided to go ahead and make uh, an asset to be able to use it myself, and I thought it would be a nice share. So what you're seeing here on the viewport is the uh, near point function being used to find the closest points from one geometry to the other, in this case from the grid to the sphere, and then that array of of, of indices is converted to an array of positions, the positions on the sphere. And so basically I'm visualizing here on the points of the grid the found positions on the sphere. Uh, this is being, I have some things going on in here. So for example, I'm making that position relative to the grid points here by subtracting the, the, the grid point position. I could do that of course uh, on the, the attribute wrangle itself, put this here and that, that would work out. I wouldn't need this. But the thing is, sometimes you want to uh, make some transformations on the data that you want to visualize but not actually change it it's just for visualization purposes and so that's why I have all these options here in terms of space transformation but let's uh, let's check more options on uh, this um, here for example you can see that I randomize the U per array so I can quickly identify the grouping um, of the data per array so of course all of these uh, vectors come from this array that is on this point and they get the same color uh, let's check here the pig head and so this is the default layout of the, the asset set on to the, the p attribute but you can see here you have the list of available attributes to visualize these are uh, all vector attributes array or not you'll see that the, they were it filtered out attributes that are not vectors so here you have a string attribute a float an integer a matrix a matrix attribute but none of those show up you also notice that there's duplicated names for different classes i have here normal 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 i have position 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 V array, V array, V array. And so the way to go about it, let's say I put here V array, is that by default, uh, one of those is chosen, but I can uh, explicitly say, no, I actually want the one that is on the primitive. And so now I am seeing the primitive attribute called V array. Or if I go to detail, I see the, the detail. The other thing is that you can, sometimes the attribute is too small. And so you can always uh, size up the, in this case, this displays with vector arrows. So you can scale up the arrows. So that uh, more visible and you can also control the, uh, the size of the arrow so this this is not a proper ui viewport thing you know it's just a, a gimmick a hack and so of course the arrows will always have the same size depending uh regardless of the the how close or uh, how far you are from from them so here you have a, a value that allows you to control the size of the arrows and that's it uh this will also control the this marker size will also control the uh, the size of the spheres in this other display mode called lines uh, and dots. And so basically, this is more close to something that I had on Soft Image, will, which allowed me to uh, see arrays of vectors as um, a sequence of points connected by line segments. And so this can, depending on the type of a problem or a thing that you're setting up, this can be more useful than uh, than the vector arrows, uh, which also can be quite noisy. So both of these can be randomized. Uh, they are called can be randomized even though there's a base color here that you can uh, basically select the start and the end color and also the color of the markers but these can be uh, random here and so same will happen for both let me go back on those options and let's look at this option here to uh, select what's being outputted from the asset and what's put onto guide so at the moment uh, these vector arrows we're seeing here they are put they are, they are a guide what's coming out of the asset is the same thing that I was going in so if I put here all and I check you can see that there's nothing special uh, on 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 the pig head now uh, it was only a visualization gimmick but I can instead of having the pig head to come out I can to choose that instead I actually want the lines I want to get the markers either the vector arrows or the, the spheres but I can get the lines. so in this case uh, you can see that now I have um, the arrow uh, line so it can select this I can move this I can use this in further um, in further modeling operations or a copy to point or Something, you know. So it's just a way to get this information or get a uh, geometry out of this uh, out of this tool. So let's go back to this one. Put here input 
back into the uh, the output. And so the I guess the last thing to talk about is the space. So this this space, like I said before, this um, space field is to basically transform either the, uh, the attribute data, so in this case V array, or transform where uh, the um, the data is being placed, where the where is the root. So the, this, these vectors they have a, a placement, and that placement in this case, since this is a, a point attribute, they're being placed on the point. But I can always change that by transforming this. So I can, uh, for example, let's say this object is transformed on translation, rotation, and scaling, and I can negate that. So I can, for example, come here and subtract the object transformation on the data. You can see that since the object was scaled down, now the vectors are scaled up and they are also uh, rotated. And I can also uh, negate the, the object transformation on the placement. So now I'll have all of those going to the origin. I can keep going and I can subtract the element position on the uh, where the data comes from. And you can see that now everything is on the origin. So something like this. So this is a way to quickly uh, transform the data for visualization purposes without actually having to transform it itself or create duplicate uh, attributes for that purpose. Um, here, I just have an example with some copy to points boxes. So I can show the last the last field, which is the intrinsic. So this intrinsic is relative to the primitive intrinsic called transform. And so for example, here, let's say I put the normal. And so since the normal is used on the copy to point to align the boxes, if I remove their influence, the influence of the uh, primitive intrinsic transform, you can see that everything points in the same direction now. And I can keep going and you know, keep removing things. And I'll end up with all the vectors on the origin uh, origin pointing to the, the z-axis. So this is it. I, I know this, this part here can be a little bit confusing, but I think it can also be very handy um, sometimes when, if you know what you're doing so that you don't have to uh, have the extra effort of transforming data or duplicating, etc. Let me know what you uh, think of this whole uh, asset, if there's uh, anything that you think would be uh, nice to include. And yeah, hope I hope it's useful to you as uh, it's useful to me. Cheers. Yum, yum!